Sene to e consumption. E me sere o. Abadia. The President of the Senate Federal Republic of Nigeria, distinguished Senator Goswil Obod Akwabio, the Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, the Deputy Senate President, distinguished Senator Gibrin Barrow, the Deputy Speaker, Right Honorable Ben Kalu, his Excellency, the Governor of Akwa Ibom State, ably represented by his deputy. The leaders of the House of Representatives and the Senate, our former speaker, and currently the Chief of Staff to the President, former Senate Presidents present here, especially distinguished Senator Ayim Pius Ayim, distinguished Senator Ken Namani, Distinguished Senator David Bonamincha Mark, and of course, Distinguished Senator Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan. Former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Patricia Ete. Special Advisors to the President, the Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of the Republic of Germany, Director General National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, the resident representative of Conrad Adenau Stipton, honored guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. This day for me feels like a social reunion. For the first time in our history, all the elected heads of our branches of government are produced by the hallowed halls of the National Assembly. For the first time in our history, the heart of the executive branch of our government is serviced by the alumni of the National Assembly. Both the Chief of Staff and the Deputy Chief of Staff to the President are proud alumni of the National Assembly. <laughs> the First Lady of the Federation is an alumni so also is the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. I am certain you know what this means. We cannot afford to go to war. Not because we are going to overlook each other's transgressions, but because we are going to engage with those who know the gravity of your work and will never take you for granted. There is no place in this country where you can find a paternal bond as enduring as the ones that bind the members of the National Assembly. The Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State is my sister. We worked closely in spite of our political differences. And I joined the distinguished Senate President in prophesizing that in the fullness of time, I think we'll join the same family. <laughs> Our distinguished <laughs> former Senate President, Senator David Bonaventure Mark, his own biological daughter, is my protege. She is a member of the House of Representatives and she won her seat under the platform of the LPC. <laughs> From converging on Abuja to water the dreams, debate the needs and mitigate the peers of, the, of a diverse nation. We have forged friendships that defy the stereotypes of our differences. Term after term, election after election, all our new members return and exit. But the burden of managing a diverse nation has ensured that we cannot afford to tread the path of divisions. So allow me, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to congratulate you and declare that the 10th National Assembly is unquestionably the luckiest we have had so far. You have a president and a vice president who are one of you and recognize the sacrifices you make. 
President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has with utter certainty reassured us that we are not in government to go to war with the National Assembly. We are here to collaborate and march towards shared values. Our journey as a democratic nation has been marked by trials and triumphs, setbacks and progress, but through it all, the National Assembly has remained steadfast in its commitment to our collective well-being. It is there, within the chambers, that the voices of our diverse constituencies find expression, while the aspirations of our people are transformed into legislative action and why the foundations of our democracy are continually fortified. The Ninth National Assembly, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is a testimonial you need to acknowledge that the vibrancy of democracy isn't determined by the recurrence of conflict between the executive and the legislature. Democracy thrives only while we agree that every voice holds value and each perspective is significant. Governance is a collective responsibility, not a personal endeavor. Our most significant achievements were attained through cooperation and harmony. This is what we seek from you because we are brothers and sisters in pursuit of a country that serves all of us. It's rightly attested to by distinguished Senator Goswila Pabio. One out of every four black men is a Nigerian. The trajectory of global growth is facing Africa, and Nigeria will make or mar that transition. By 2050, Nigeria will be the third most populous nation on earth. Our population will hit 440 million will surpass the United States of America. And by the end of the century, Nigeria will be the most populous nation on earth. And what are we going to do with the anticipated demographic bulge? This is a blessed nation. We can turn the anticipated demographic bulge into demographic dividends. I believe with the quality of leadership we have, it will not turn into a demographic disaster that will consume all of us. The Ninth National Assembly never treated the legislature as just a debate club, but rather a distinguished institution with a more profound mission. As ambassadors of the nation's diverse interests, we didn't convene in Abuja to engage in vocal contests. Our purpose was to discover unity in our differences. Our presence was to safeguard the interests of our constituents by articulating their wishes and providing them with staunch advocacy. Our ultimate goal was to secure their recognition and representation within the executive branch. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the National Assembly is a complete spectrum of human experience. This is why you will witness eloquent testimonies of your colleagues in defense of reason. This is why you will witness profound debates that will dismantle your age-long assumptions. But in the end, you will realize that we are all bound by our fidelity to the ideals of democracy. Today, I stand before you, burdened with an additional responsibility, having been entrusted with the honor of serving as the vice president of our beloved nation. Although we may no longer share the same chamber, our fraternal bond remains unbreakable just as our commitment to safeguarding democracy passes. It is this sense of brotherhood and sisterhood, this shared sense of purpose that has enabled us to navigate the turbulent seas of governance with unwavering resilience and unwavering determination. This reunion of ours is an avenue to remind ourselves that the National Assembly, for being a meeting point of all political parties, ethnicities, religions, and regions cannot be a war within, cannot be a war among siblings. The Ninth National Assembly did exceedingly well. And when a piece starts getting rotten, it starts from the head. 
the credit for the success of the National Assembly, of the Ninth National Assembly, can be attributed largely to the Debonia gentleman seated here and the former Speaker of the House of Reds, the Chief of Staff. The task before the Tenth National Assembly is mastering the science of combating differences into democracy and democracy into dividends. Whether in managing relationships among yourselves or debating the appears of your constituents. Finally, I want to once again join the uncommon senator. His loquaciousness is matched by his performance. I was quite mesmerized when he started showing us the landmark project that he did while as a governor. From the Bird's Eye Stadium to the state of the art airport, to the first class road infrastructure, to this beautiful edifice. <laughs> Controversial he might well be, but he, had, he was the top of his class of 2007. Just like with all humility, I can claim to be the top of my class of 2011. It's my singular honor and privilege to pluck up this retreat. I wish you fruitful deliberations. I wish you well. I wish our leaders, elder statesmen seated here, I'm quite glad. It's a real opportunity. It's a real privilege that I will cherish forever to address you. Not because of my pedigree. Certainly not because of my physical prowess. Then it appears I empires can mold me to pieces. <laughs> not because of my intellect. We have PhD holders, Tajuddin Abbas holds PhD. The single Senator Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan is a PhD holder. Professor Julius Oembere is a reputed professor of political science. Certainly not because of my political sagacity. There are people who have been here far too long in the system than I am. Power is a gift from God. We are going to spend more lives, more years of our lives outside power than in power. Power to me is a humbling experience. Power should be used for the good of the people. We are the luckiest amongst Nigerians. We are not better than our next door neighbor. Yesterday I hosted my classmates from the University of Ibadan, the MSc class of 1991. The best graduating student in my class was from Oladipo. Oladipo is languishing as a DGM in one mediocre bank. He was the best graduating student. That goes to show that we are here not because we are the best of the best, but we are the representatives of our people. We are the representative of the black man. That is the burden we all carry. If Nigeria appeals, the black man has failed. Let us make Nigeria work. Thank you, and may God bless the federal republic of Nigeria.